Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's just remember that Leader Schumer can bring all these wonderful nominees, highly qualified nominees, to the floor uh, for a vote. And rather than being here having this discussion, it's an important discussion, we could be here voting and um, moving these nominees through. And also, Secretary Austin could change this with the stroke of a pen. By this afternoon, we could have this resolved if Secretary Austin would revert to the historical policy that we've had for, for decades in the Pentagon. But General, good morning. Thank you and congratulations on your nomination. I really enjoyed our conversation last week. Um, congratulations as well and thank you to your family, uh, Gina, and your three children who have served right there with you. So we thank them as well. You know, in the conversation last week and many of the conversations I've heard this morning, we're there's a concern about joint force readiness. So let's talk about that just a little bit more. Um, in a growing fighter capacity gap and the threat posed by China both in the near term and in the long term as well, General. So given budget constraints, the Air Force has decided to divest to invest. That is to divest aging aircraft that you've mentioned uh, this morning in favor of investing in research and developing a future platforms like the B-21 and next generation air dominance family of systems. So do you agree with that overall strategy, General, yes or no? I do. Thank you. So divest to invest doesn't come out with, doesn't come uh, without significant risk, particularly when it comes to uh, fighter and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance or ISR capacity, given the growing threat posed by China and before these, these systems come online in the early 2030s. So I'm interested in ways that we can mitigate that risk to ensure that we're both ready today and better prepared for tomorrow. So talk to me, if you would, about ways that we can accomplish both modernization and improve current readiness rates. We talked a little bit about this in my office last week. Well, yeah, Senator, thank you. And I also very much enjoyed that conversation and uh, specifically the joint aspect of it, because I think as we understand how we're going as an Air Force, we need to make sure that's in concert with our joint partners, because there's also ways we can mitigate risk across the joint force. But, but Senator, to your point, uh, specifically on how we might be able to, to mitigate the transition as we move from where we are to where we need to be. Uh, there are tough choices ahead, there, there's no question about it. However, as we look towards doing some smart things, such as I, I would say with, within our bomber fleet, obviously we're working on the B-21, but we've got a B-52 that's likely to live to be a centenarian. And it's because we're looking at, can it operate in the environment that it's used to operating in? Can it still be relevant? And how do we make it relevant? So as we do that, we wanna look to take those that we can't find a relevance for in the future and look to divest those to be able to reap those savings. However, as we look to the future and air superiority, that's why we were speaking earlier very briefly about collaborative combat aircraft. We have to find a way of having affordable mass. The ability to do air superiority and the ability to function in the Indo-Pacific in a way that is not cost prohibitive. And that's why the faster we can get to some of these modernization initiatives like CCAs, which we are absolutely focused on, the, the shorter that sort of vulnerability period is and the more we can mitigate that risk with the resources that we've been given. And if I'm confirmed, I, I, I commit to continuing to work and have that dialogue back and forth with this, bit, with this body on that. Thank you, General. Just yesterday, Secretary Kendall said that given combatant commanders insatiable appetites for forces, that we should exercise strategic discipline and prioritize deployment of ISR platforms and other forces to maintain readiness. Do you agree with Secretary Kendall? I do agree with that, and, I, and understanding the context within which we've had conversations yes. on that, that context is that when we ask for ISR, I think they're used to asking for it in a certain way with a platform, when in fact, what is the capability that you need? What is the situation awareness that you need, and can we provide that in a different way? And when he says that they have an insatiable appetite, it's not meant to be pejorative. It's with an understanding that if I'm that combatant commander, I have a certain area of risk that I have to uh, sort of, uh, you know, buy down that as well. And so I would be asking for that as well. And so it's with an understanding of that tension and maybe a way to break through that. In recently reported remarks, Admiral Aquilino, commander of Indo-PACOM, he stated that his metric for success is the ability to find, fix, and finish 1,000 targets within 24 hours. I appreciate that clarity. With the Air Force divesting significant numbers of the platforms needed to do that, how can the department improve its readiness and posture to ensure that it can able 
the Indo-Pacific with the forces necessary to accomplish such a vital task in the event of conflict? Senator, thank you for that. I would say, in brief, if we are to seek to meet that goal of finding, fixing, and finishing a 1,000 targets, we are not going to be able to do that with our current capabilities. It, was, it is only with transitioning to platforms that move as part of a system that we're going to be able to scale and keep that situational awareness with networks that are resilient enough to where you don't have a single point of failure and you can recover and self-heal and still be able to prosecute those targets. That's not the capabilities we fully have today, but that's what we envision being able to transition to in order to meet uh, Admiral Aquilino's and our department vision for, for having that uh, speed and scale. General, I wish you luck. Thank you, and again, your family. Thank you, Senator Chairman. Bud.